Hello friends, today I'm making a doll inspired by the Netflix show Squid Game. Light spoilers, so if you're really desperate to see the show, watch that up until episode 3 and then come back. I promise I'm not going to spoil any of the story beats though. If you enjoy the doll or the video, please give me a like, consider subscribing if you want to see more, drop me a comment, share, it all helps me in the algorithm and I really really appreciate it. I'm going to show you things in a little bit of a different order today. So I'm starting with the clothes. I decided to make this a jumpsuit. I'm using polyester satin. To stop that fraying I'm just cutting it with a soldering iron. I wanted to show you quite a nifty way of putting a zipper in. This works in human clothes as well. I had a like regular human zipper in my stash but it's way too long so I'm just measuring that and cutting it down. The front of the jumpsuit is pinned. I'm sewing like the crotch part normally and then the rest of the front seam I've set my stitch length to five millimeters quite long and I'm not doing a back stitch at either end. So once that seam is sewn I'm then gonna iron the seam allowance flat open. This is really important it must be flat. And then I'm trying my best to align the zipper with that seam that I've just sewn and then pinning it down. Using a zipper foot, I'm carefully sewing on the three sides of the zipper, leaving the top of it open. Just going around with a straight stitch with matching thread. So here's the magic part. Using a seam ripper or a small pair of scissors, we're gonna undo that first seam that we sewed, you know, the one with the long stitches, which is gonna reveal a perfectly sewed zipper. Mine's a little bit wonky, yours will be perfect, I promise. Look at that, isn't that cool? So this now works as one piece. I'm just sewing the back seam and then the shoulder seams and then the back of the hood. I also hemmed the hood at this point, making sure that it would fit the neckline perfectly. Then I sewed the hood to the neckline. Then I added the sleeves. I really wish I'd added elastic to the cuffs at this point. I didn't, I did it later and it was a bit of a struggle. So this is the point to add elastic. Then I sewed the entire side seam. I'm not sewing the inseam at the moment. I'm adding kind of like a binding here. Um, I didn't realise that there was kind of a tall colour underneath the hood as well. But this um, works quite well because it lets me wrangle the edges of the zipper and also all of that seam allowance. Then I made some tiny pockets and I'm sewing one on the chest and one on either side of the leg. I'm going quite slow here because this top stitch will be visible. And then I'm sewing a tiny pink button onto the pocket. Now I'm sewing the inseam. I sewed a long strip of fabric to make belt loops, which I then added to the jumpsuit just out of frame. Sorry about that. Also regrets, I wish I'd made the belt before adding the belt loops. This was a bit of a, an error. So I'm folding this piece of black fabric to make a belt and then I'm ironing it. I'm folding it like this to kind of control the raw edges. You could use a ribbon if you wanted, but I wanted this to be matte. And then I'm sewing a top stitch all the way around and feeding it through those belt loops with difficulty. I sewed one of the edges of the belt down to the jumpsuit. This is gonna help gather the waist and then use this flat wire to make a belt buckle. I sewed a snap fastener on the sewn down side of the belt and then to the free end of the belt. I made sure to put it onto the doll 
to make sure that I could get the gather that I wanted around the waist. I cut that belt down and then I'm just sewing down the edges. And I'm using a little bit of electrical tape to cover the belt buckle while watching TikTok. So that's all finished. There's a link to this pattern in the description box below for free if you want to make it for yourself. To make the mask I'm essentially making a wig cap but for his face. So this is polymorph plastic. It's going to create the base for me to work on over his face. So I'm no I know it's going to be able to fit his face but also be domed. This becomes malleable in hot water so even after I've finished the mask I'll be able to use the mould again. I've cling filmed his face once and because that polymorph plastic is mm, a little bit flexible around the edges because it was so thin I added some duct tape to make sure that it was snug to his face and then another layer of cling film over the top to try and make sure I can get this mask off. I'm using black tool, so the first layer is going on and I'm securing that with some little tiny elastics, these are from loom bands. And then I'm coating that with a layer of PVA glue. PVA glue dries clear. In the show the masks are, are kind of opaque but when you, you get a bit close you can see through them so I'm planning on doing enough layers for it to be translucent. So in another layer of tool on top of that glue and then I'm just going to set that aside to dry. Once that dry I added more glue and another layer of tool and just like with a wig cap I'm trying to pull all the wrinkles out to the back or to the sides. Let it dry again and then one more layer. So once that was completely dry, I'm going to try and get it off his head. It was quite tight to that polymorph plastic underneath. I thought it would have come out more easily, so I decided to trim away as much as I could. The loom bands are quite tight, so they're pulling it out of shape here. I, th I hoped it would be strong enough to stand on its own, but it wasn't. So I'm trimming away as much as I can here. And then used more of that flat wire to make a band that will go around his head. This turned out to be um, like quite a good solution because it means that it's completely tight to his face, so it doesn't need like a strap behind his head or anything. It just fits snugly and I'm using hot glue to put all that together. I cut strips of vinyl to add the detail and added them to the mask just off frame, <laughs> sorry. About a week ago I put a cryptic poll on my Instagram, circle, triangle or square and circle one, just. I'm using a white pencil to roughly sketch out the circle placement and then painting over top of that with Vallejo white. Let me know in the comments, circle, square or triangle. I feel like triangle is the correct choice, but I'd probably choose umbrella. Another tip, Mr. Hobby Cleaner is really good for kind of reviving paintbrushes that you've left and forgotten to clean. So the sculpt on the BTS shoes was already perfect. I'm just painting those black with Vallejo again and then dry brushing them with a dark grey and edge highlighting to bring out some more of those details.
Some of the pink soldiers carry assault weapons, so I'm using this kit that I got in Yodobashi Camera in Osaka. I love these kits, they go together really easily, they just like push together and have moving parts, which I think is very, very cool. Where I clipped the pieces out, there's still a bit, uh, as do you call it flash? It's not really flash, bits of plastic that I don't need. So I'm either sanding those away or using a scalpel to cut them away. And then I'm painting it in the same way that I did the shoes. I'm just being a little bit careful around the handle because there is a hinge there, which is a moving part, which I want to keep. I was considering only making the outfit, but I decided that I would do a face up in the end. I'll explain a little bit more later. Um, I had some issues getting his head off. The neck hole is really, really tight to the neck peg. It took me a, a lot longer than I'm showing to get that head off. I ripped the head when I was pulling the plugs out and then the face was really difficult to get off. Um, I did put pop in on in the background pop in atelier to see how she got it off and she just like mans through it i found actually that if you kind of soften the face with acetone you can then scratch it off be careful if you do this i don't want you to damage your dolls i didn't damage mine don't know if it's the safest thing to do light spoilers um i decided to do we ha june's character um june ho Th this is it's not a story beat spoiler really um and it's only a spoiler to the beginning of the third episode i absolutely hate it when people spoil shows and i really really don't want to do that so i'm not gonna really talk about the big story beats at all because it's just not fair it was a really fun show to watch i think i watched it on release day because i'd seen a trailer and thought it looked interesting and then i was like up all night because that's what i do with insomnia and i watched it in like two days i think it was really addictive and like really kind of kept me on the edge of my seat i really really enjoyed it but now i think it's been bigged up so i don't know if other people are going to enjoy it as much i m massively recommend it Portrait dolls are only something that I've started doing recently and I've not done one on a, a face sculpt of the actor. I'm hoping to do a couple of those in the future. I think it's definitely harder manipulating a face sculpt of somebody else. So this is a Jimin doll and it was the closest of the BTS dolls that I own to We Ha Jun. And I think the one of the big differences is that Jimin has much bigger lips and then the distance between his nose and his um, mouth is longer than we are June so like I'm doing the best I can to make it look like him and honestly I can't even tell if I did because like you spend so much time staring at the photos and staring at the doll that you're doing that in the end you're like I just can't tell so I know he's definitely an Asian man which I think is awesome so if he doesn't actually look like we are June we can just say he's just a random pink soldier. I find with portrait dolls that I use a lot more pastel but but in in more layers and I, I also find that like it's pretty good once you think you're finished and I did do this with this face up once you think you fin finish like step away for a bit and I actually asked one of my buddies Stefu dolls um what they thought and they did help me as well kind of like bring it a bit back I'd put his cheekbones kind of in the wrong place I don't know, it is tricky, but I'm, I definitely feel like I'm improving. And I enjoyed doing this face up as well. Like the last two portrait dolls I did, I found were quite stressful. But yeah, this one, this one I, I really enjoyed. I actually watched Squid Game dub. I'm still really struggling with watching Asian things. I'm still quite triggered by it since leaving Japan but also <laughs> one of the problems I have with Korean and I think it's like 
a combination of Korean sounding similar to Japanese, but then also I have um, an auditory processing disorder. So to me, Korean sounds like misheard Japanese. So I spend so much time like really, really forcing myself to listen because I think I should be able to understand it. But of course I don't. I don't speak Korean other than like, hello and thank you. I do want to go and watch it again in the Korean and there's somebody on TikTok as well doing like kind of like cultural reads of it which I think is really interesting because I know a bit about Korean culture not much but that does change the story quite a lot. I'm really lucky that I've been able to go to Korea I think three or four times now. I love the food so much and there is Korean food in Japan as well and because I've been watching the show and then doing this doll I had to go and find some kimchi because I just can't be bothered to make it so I finally got some kimchi! So even after I thought I'd finished the doll, I came back and did a couple more layers just to try and move his cheekbones. I found viscose hair is the best thing I've ever done for short hairstyles. It's very easily manipulated. So this is from Viscose Heaven. I'll put her links in the description box below. I'm just making some flocking because he has short hair in, in the back. So I'm just using my sharpest tiny pair of scissors and cutting really super, super short pieces here. Like two inches made all this flocking. Then I'm adding some PVA glue just in, in three sections I did this, dunking it in the flocking and then brushing off the excess. I also kind of like tapped the flocking in a little bit. There is commercial flocking available but doing this makes sure that you're going to get exactly the right colour match plus it's so cheap. Any patches that I've missed, I'm just putting a little bit more glue on top and then dunking him in again. I actually drew him some sideburns as well, just to extend those a little bit. And then I'm using this scalpel just to trim the edges to make sure that they're neat. So then for the rest of the hair, I'm just gluing it straight to his scalp. I'm going straight round his head once I, I dried it a little bit with my hair dryer just to try and keep the hair a little bit separate and then did another layer all the way round. I think I used to feel like you had to do wefts or reroutes and I'm at the stage now where I'm confident enough to kind of do the bits that give me joy. Like some people really enjoy a reroute. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I hate making wefts, I hate brushing out yarn, so I'm not doing it anymore. So once I'd done those two full rounds to make sure that his crown is like at, at where the, it should be at the back of his head, I then did a few layers just from the front and then working back towards the crown I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative with the glue and trying to hide it a little bit so top tip for just cheating and only doing what I want I'm going to reroute just his crown in the same way that I would with nylon hair folding it in half I'm doing about eight plugs into his crown so this will hide that glue and make it look a lot more natural. I've personally never found it necessary to open the hole in the head before rerouting. I, I know other people do. I don't know if this is because it's a thick needle that I've cut myself. I've not used a commercial reroute needle before but yeah I, I just go straight through. Sometimes you need to like twist the needle a little, a little bit. Because there's only that little bit of hair in there that needs holding, I'm just using a paintbrush to put glue only on that hair that I've rerouted with. 
The actor's hair in the movie is quite choppy and to do that I'm using a razor to do like the first pass of the haircut. I'm trying to be really careful to not cut the, the doll underneath. When I got around to the front, I um, put my finger underneath the hair, between the doll and the razor. I'm being a little bit more conservative in front as well because I don't want to cut it too short. And then I'm using my tiny super sharp embroidery scissors um, to cut into there. Rather than cutting horizontally a flat line, I find cutting this way gives you a more natural looking fall to the hair. A little bit of water is really helpful to just hold those flyaways down. I painted his hands black to look like gloves. Because I struggled so much getting the head off the neck peg, I knew I'd struggle getting it back on, so I'm cutting it down as much as I think I can get away with. I don't want to mess his hair up so I'm putting his head in a plastic bag and then dunking that in hot water. I think I left it in about two minutes until it was soft enough to get back on and I really struggled again with the neck peg. I had to really squish his head. I was very worried that I'd cracked the face up. I think I should have trimmed away some of his neck hole really. And then I put him in his jumpsuit. Put his shoes on. And his mask. And then to make the strap for his gun, I used a piece of synthetic satin ribbon and a couple of bits of wire. So how do you think I did? Have you been watching Squid Game? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I really want to talk about the show. I really enjoyed it. But please, if you're putting any big story beats, put a spoiler warning just for people that haven't seen it. I, I genuinely don't know when we can start spoiling shows, especially on like a streaming service. I just don't know when it's okay to start just talking about it. If you like the doll or the video, then please give me a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. My upload schedule isn't great, so make sure you hit that notification bell because I'm... What is what is schedule? What does this mean? Thanks as always to my wonderful patrons. Your support means the world to me. With a special shout out and extra thanks to Camilla. You're all super awesome. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!